Well, hey everybody, my name is Doug Vance. It is so good to be with you today. I know for many of you, you're probably watching this um, during the day. I just figured it would be great for us to just have a little bit of a fireside chat. I know for me, a lot of times I just get to connect with God and enjoy some quiet. It's around a campfire. And actually we're camping right now. My wife and I are uh, four weeks into a, a little bit of a sabbatical. And so we're out in Phoenix, um, out in the Southwest, just enjoying some amazing creation with God. And uh, I'm just excited to be with you all today as we share in this time. Thanks, Mark, for inviting me uh, to participate with your Lenten lunch. Well, let's dive right in. And our passage of scripture today is going to be in John 5, 16, 30. But before we jump in there, let me ask this question. Have you ever missed the point? Have you ever missed the point, something that was so right in front of you? And you just missed it. You know, for me, when I was growing up, I loved playing basketball. And I played and I learned when I was a kid. And I can remember loving the game of basketball. But there's one thing that I didn't love. It was all those drills, those practices, those things that you just go like, why do I have to do them? And I never saw the point of those practice drills like burpees and jumping jacks and uh, push-ups and sprints. And, and I remember complaining to my coaches all the time and, and and I remember one of my coaches was like, Doug, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Then if you do, then just kind of follow and you'll see. Well, sure enough, those things actually help me be a better athlete. They help me be a better team player. They actually help me be a better basketball player. And I missed the point in that moment. We're going to talk about some people today who missed the point. They missed the point of what Jesus was trying to do. So in order to get there, we're going to kind of take a little, little look at the backstory. In John chapter 5, before we get to our verses in 16, at the beginning of John chapter 5, Jesus enters Jerusalem. And he enters Jerusalem through what we know as the Sheep Gate, the Sheep's Gate. And that gate, I think, is significant because it's the gate where they would lead the sheep through the gate to the temple to be slaughtered, to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people of Israel. And here Jesus is. We know him as the Lamb of God. And we're getting ready to just march towards Easter and remember his passion and his resurrection. And isn't it interesting that he marches through this sheep's gate at the beginning of the chapter? He is the Lamb of God. And he is the sacrifice that provides eternal life for us. It's why we're in this Lenten season. And Jesus enters this sheep's gate. And not far from there is this pool, this pool of Bethsaida. And this pool, around the pool, were beggars, and they were sick people and lame people and injured, and those who had just all sorts of maladies. And the reason was, was about 300 years prior to this, the, 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 the Greek Empire, the Greece, uh, uh, Greeks would come through, and they created this pool, and this pool was known to be an ancient healing pool and there would be spring water that would come in and that would bubble in and when it would bubble in those sick and lame people believe that the god of the greeks would um, heal them in whoever could get there first and so whenever that would happen there'd just be this mad rush into the pool to try to find healing well there was a man there that day as jesus walked in and he hadn't walked for 38 years he was lame he couldn't get up and everyone knew him there. He'd probably been there for years and years and years. And on that day, Jesus, well, he saw that man and he walked over. He walked over and he touched him. And he said, do, do you want to be healed? And the man said, well, I, I can't be healed. How can I be healed? I can't even get into the pool. See, he had no one to help him into that pool. He had no family that were there. And a lot of times those people who couldn't walk, they would have family or friends that would help get them in the pool and be the first one to when that pool would spring up, maybe to get healed. And that man, I think, was just probably after 38 years giving up his hope. And yet Jesus, in that moment, healed him. And he said, take up your mat and walk. And the man did that. He got up after 38 years of not walking and he grabbed his mat and he rolled it up and he ran out of there. Well, there was a group of people that were watching this whole scene take place. And there's one thing that I didn't tell you. The one thing was, was that this event took place on what we would know as the Jewish Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath. And that was a day where 
The Jews didn't do any work. They didn't, they didn't do any work whatsoever. And here Jesus healed a man and told him to roll up his mat and run away. Well, the Jewish leaders were not happy about that because in their minds, Jesus was doing work and he was asking a man to work. And they completely missed the point in that moment. You know, you and I, we can miss the point, can't we sometimes? These Jewish leaders missed the point. And that's what brings us to our scripture today. So it took a little bit of time to get there, but I felt like it was so important for you and I to know a little bit of the backstory as we jump into this passage. And so here it is, John chapter 5, verse 16. And it says this, So the Jewish leaders, because they're the center of what we're looking at. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules. But Jesus replied, my father is always working, and so am I. So, the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him. For he not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his father, thereby making himself equal with God. See, here it is. The Jewish leaders, they completely missed the point in this moment, didn't they? They didn't see a man that Jesus healed and brought to life, a man that had almost given up hope, that all of a sudden could walk. They looked completely past that, and all they could see was Jesus asked this guy to pick up his mat, and he's causing him to sin. And they missed the point. And from that point on, they begin to harass Jesus. In fact, I find it very interesting that in the Gospel of John, this is the first time that we really see that the leaders, the Jewish leaders of Israel, begin to openly plot how to ultimately kill Jesus. I think that's very significant. Well, Jesus continues. He says, so, I, so Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the Father will show him how to do even greater works than, he, than this healing, this man. Then you will truly be astonished. See, Jesus was beginning to unveil that he and the Father, that they were one, that there's a relationship that was there. He was kind of also like throwing this out there to the religious leaders, to those Jewish leaders that, that obviously he knew in his heart that they were beginning to plot his demise. And he lands in verse 30, and I think this is very important. He says this, he says, I can do nothing on my own. Now here's Jesus. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me as the Father. Therefore my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Jesus lands this, this, this passage today and he just goes, I'm only doing the will of the Father. And that I think incensed the Jewish leaders all the more. And the unfortunate thing is, is that they missed the point. What they couldn't see was this beautiful thing that Jesus has done. All they could see was this rule that Jesus broke. Not a man that was healed, not a hope that was restored, that Jesus brought to that. They could only see one thing and they missed the point. You know, you and I, we can miss the point so often, can't we? In the busyness of our lives, we can miss the point. We can lose sight and wake up one day and be like, how did I get here? I think in many ways, that's probably the Jewish leaders. And you and I, at least I can. I know it wasn't just in basketball. There's so many times that I missed the point. And so during this Lenten season, may you and I not miss the point. May we see and experience the Jesus who healed that man, who wants to heal and work in you and me, who wants to restore the things that are broken. So I just want to encourage you during this Lenten season, Seek the Jesus who walked into Bethsaida pool that day, who healed a man who probably gave up hope. And don't miss the point. That's our time for today. I'd just like to close with just a word of prayer for us. Dear Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for being the God that doesn't miss the point. And as we walk through this Lenten season, as we march towards Easter, Jesus, would you just really speak to each person today. Holy Spirit, just you know where everyone is at. You know the struggles that we are in, the things that we battle with. Jesus, today I pray that you would bring healing. I pray that you would bring hope and restoration 
to each and every one of us that our relationship with you would be just so rich and fruitful in this time. God, we thank you. We thank you for being a God that followed the will of the Father to go to the cross and to rise from the dead. We thank you for all these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen.